Want to try hexagonal thinking in your classroom without spending an hour or two in advance preparing for the activity for your students? Stick around. I'm going to show you how. Hi, I'm Robin Sneed, high school English teacher and literacy coach, and I can't wait to share with you how using Google Slides to prepare your hexagonal thinking activity can save you time and create an interactive critical thinking activity for you and your students. So let's get started. So a quick Google search about hexagonal thinking will bring up a number of different ways and subjects that hexagonal thinking can be used. Hexagonal thinking is a critical thinking exercise in which students make connections. In fact, they can make up to six connections for every single card that they have. So let me show you how to save time by not having to cut out every single one of these little hexagons for your students before they arrive to class. Here is an example of a Google slide in which my students recently uh, used hexagonal thinking in order to make connections based on the novel Great Expectations. Here's the directions slide. And as you can see, I have shared with my students that they can make up to six connections and that they can connect characters with settings, with subjects, themes, and symbols. And I have color coded these on the next slide. So blue is character, green is setting, as well as the, the, the subjects, themes, and symbols that are important in the novel. I've also given them a couple of wild cards that they can play with. All they have to do once they're out of presentation mode is to click on these and add their own character or theme. And they have even a few more on the next slide. So let me show you first how students use the slides and then I'm going to show you how you can quickly make your own. Students go to slide three here. They don't put it in presentation mode. Instead, they begin moving these slides around so that they can make connections. So Pip is kind of the central character. He is the protagonist. So I'm going to put him here. And some things that become very, very evident and uh, important to him is social class. Ambition and hope. Your students will have a lot of great discussion talking about where these different uh, six cards deserve the spot of being right next to Pip or being connected to other slides. Okay, so I'm going to move Unrequited Love here as well. And then I'm going to obviously move Stella. Stella is the Unrequited Love. She's also the reason for his ambition and his hope, his great expectations. So your students will work together and they'll start to make these connections and they'll start to see how things in the novel are beginning to fit together. I like to do this early on, maybe halfway through the novel, and then again later at the end of the novel and see the difference and let them, let them compare the way the thinking may have shifted throughout the course of the novel. We are now going to create your own template for the hexagonal thinking activity that I just showed you. And I'm starting from the beginning. So from here, from your Google homepage, if you'll click on the Google Apps and go to Slides, or if you're in your drive, click on New and go to Slides. And then I'm going to click here for a blank canvas with which to work. And you're going to want four slides for this, for your template you will make, be making copies of this template. So go ahead and click the plus and add four new slides. Once you have that done, you're going to want to pick your themes. Um, there are a wide variety to choose from, but I just want a plain black theme. So I'm going to go with simple dark. I'm going to let you choose um, your own creative way to set up your title page. The second page is your directions slide. Rewind and find the directions that I gave to my students. So you can create your own here. 
And then the third slide, that's where we're working now. So what I would like for you to do is if you are in Google Slides with me, if you're following along with me, go ahead and close out those themes once you have your theme selected. And I like to give myself a little bit more space to work. So I am going to zoom into 100. And once you've done that, again, I want you to be on the third slide. So if you're on the third slide, you can tell because it's highlighted here. Go up to the top above the title bar, the title line, and you're going to hold down your mouse and drag until both boxes are highlighted. And then let go and click on the delete button. And now we have a perfectly blank canvas. Okay, so now that we have a blank canvas, we want to create our shapes. Again, all we need is a hexagon and that's this one with the number six inside it. So then we are going to, once we have this little cross, we're going to be able to click and drag and we can create our hexagon as big or as small as we'd like. The main thing here, you can resize later. The main thing here as you're creating this is to try to make sure all the sides are as even as possible so that when we have several of them, they fit together like puzzle pieces. And then if you need to, you can resize, you can make it larger or smaller depending on how much information you want on each slide and how many slides you need for your students to work with. That's going to depend on your content. So. For our template, we're just going to create several of these, but first I want to change the color. Not a big fan of gray, I like color. So we're going to click on the hexagon, make sure that it's, that this box is around it um, so that it is selected. That's how we know it's selected. And we're going to go up here to our fill color tool. And we're going to click on it and then pick a color that, that you like any of these colors that you like. I'm going to go with green. Um, and I like the way that looks. I can change my mind. Once I have the shape the way I want it, before, I, before you make a copy, you're going to want to make sure that when you double click in the hexagon, so that when you type, it's not going to be, it doesn't look right to me if it's uh, left aligned. I want it center aligned. So I'm going to go here and center it and now whatever I type whether it's pip or maybe I'm doing Pride and Prejudice I want to talk about Mr. Darcy it's going to be center aligned so I'm going to get rid of that because again this is the template and I am going to again select and if I right click I can copy I can paste I can do all of that but a simpler way, a quicker way of doing this is to hit your control D to duplicate if you are not on a MacBook. So the duplicate command on a MacBook is command D and then just line these up however you want. There is no right or wrong. You get a little bit more space if you kind of line them up this way. This is your template, so it will take a little bit longer, but don't try to make it perfect. It's It doesn't have to be perfect. Messy is beautiful. So Command D and I create a few more. I create as many as I want and then later on I can delete them if I don't need them I can change the color and so I like to have three different colors I like to have three different categories um, whether that is setting subject theme and character or theme character and symbols if I have a bunch of symbols in the text um, just you choose your categories you choose your colors. I'm going to go with this purple and then I'm going to control D or command D and make my duplicates. And you can see that that's super quick to duplicate. And 
And because I have already center aligned, all of these are already center aligned. So now we have several of that color and I want to create one more color. So I've got, I like this one. I've got more of this color. So I'm going to go with orange. Why not? I actually like that. Make several copies of it and place them around. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I like the way those colors look. And if I don't, I can change very quickly. The next thing before you move on to anything else, we are going to create a couple of wild cards on slide four. So again, you're going to click above the click to add title bar, drag until both uh, are within the blue selected. And um, once they're both highlighted, delete. And now I'm going to, instead of command D or control D, instead of duplicating, I'm going to copy. Control C, and I'm going to paste, Control V, and then I'm going to do that for each of my colors, and put them wherever on the slide you would like. And there you go. You have your template created and you are going to come up here if you are following along with me and you're going to give your presentation, your template, a title. And I'm going to call it hexagonal thinking template. So I know not to change this one. And then from there, I can file, make a copy, entire presentation, Delete copy of and change template to uh, and prejudice. I thought I had template highlighted, but apparently not. So let's just delete that. And now I've got a brand new copy that I can play with. Make sure that you have set your title and set your directions before making your copy. I should have said that before. And then, um, I can create as many copies of this as I want, and I can have a brand new hexagonal thinking activity with each unit if I would like, or several times in a unit. Because if you if you're working with novels like Great Expectations or Pride and Prejudice, you know that um, connections shift over the course of the novel, and it's interesting to have students to do these like in the middle and then at the end and see how these things have shifted, um, as I said before. And this keeps me from having to cut these out multiple times and trying to keep up with the hexagons from, from the middle of the book to the end of the book so that they can recreate this activity. It, and it also allows for them to be able to pull up both after they've completed this activity the second time and they can um, compare their thoughts from the beginning to the end and do some critical thinking around why their thoughts shifted, what events in the plot caused the shift. But one way I love to do hex hexagonal thinking is, um, of course, I put my students in groups. Once they get their copy, then they click share and they share it with every member of their group. Four students are working together with COVID. It, allows them to work together from a distance and still be able to communicate and all of them still be able to move the cards in order to make those connections. After we complete the hexagonal thinking activity, one thing I like to do is have them do a writing assignment based on the novel following this hexagonal thinking activity. I find that after doing this critical thinking activity, the analytical essays that they write for me is much, much richer than they are when I don't require this activity. So I hope that you like it as much as I do. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial. If you found this helpful, 
please like and subscribe and leave me a comment down below.